to show you how to extract fluorescent signals from um, bacterial cells such as these ones. So I have two images. One is the bright field image, which is a phase contrast image in this case, and the other one is, let's say, a fluorescent signal that was captured from the same field of view. So to extract the signal per cell, we first need to um, tell the software, which in this case is Fiji or ImageJ, without any additional plugins or anything, so it's straight from the internet. As we need to tell Fiji how to find um, the individual cells. And for that we use a very straightforward approach that is called thresholding. So we go to image adjust threshold and what you can see is that it already indicates us, so it turns the image into a binary image which has only black and white pixels whereas uh, the white is the signal, the black is sort of the background um, and it shows us already sort of so-called segments which are, uh, in it, which are which correspond to, to the individual particles. So here we have a couple of options now. We can use these sliders to select the gray values of how to discriminate between foreground and background, so between cells and the background, or we can use one of the automatic uh, automated uh, thresholding routines. In this case, I think the Otsu actually works pretty well in finding the individual cells. So if we are happy with that, the other advantage of using an automated thresholder is also that we can use it later programmatically without having to uh, change the sliders every time. So at the end of this threshold, we just apply that and turn our image into a so-called mask. So now we have a mask that we can apply to another image. So basically we have the background is all zeros and then we have our cells that are uh, labeled as one in this in this mask, so they are labeled as being part of a cell. So what we can do now to extract individual cells from that overview of cells is we can use another built-in function of ImageJ that's called the particle analyzer, analyze particles. But before we do that, we tell ImageJ what to measure during this analysis step. So the particle analyzer can actually do quite a lot of things. So it can uh, investigate the area of that particular cell. Um, it can, of course, investigate the, uh, the pixel values, which is what we want in this case. Uh, it can give uh, us all already some sorts of statistics, standard deviation, mean and max gray values. Uh, it can uh, look at the shape and a couple of other things. The perimeter in our case is also interesting because we want maybe later to filter out very large or very small cells, so that could be interesting. The fit ellipse I will uh, mention in another video, which is particularly useful if you want to extract cells and orient them based on a particular angle. In this case, another uh, important feature is that we don't want to measure the, the density or the pixel values in the mask, of course, because that's going to be one. It's going to be only once, but we want to apply this mask to another channel for which we can use this redirect option. In this case, the image is not open, so I open it. I open my channel one image, which is here. I go back to the mask, select the set measurements option, and now I can redirect this analyze particles command to my channel one. So it will extract the particles from the mask, uh, and but measure all those parameters uh, on the channel one image. Okay, that's fine. So now I can actually um, start the analyze particles uh, command. It will open another window where here I can uh, choose the circularity as well as the, the size of the particles that I want to extract. This is something that needs to be um, adapted a little bit to your particular image, depending on the size of the particles, the pixel size and all of these things. This will have an effect on the output. What we want to show, what we see afterwards, are in this case the outlines, just to see how the results look like. Um, I choose bare outlines because those won't have any numbers. The numbers usually are on top of the uh, of the extracted particles, so I choose the outlines in this case. I want to display the results. I want to add the, the individual ROIs to the ROI manager. It should exclude all the particles uh, on at the edges and include holes. Uh, also, I 
click OK, and here's what we get. We get our individual segmented bacteria. On the um, mask, we can see that they all have numbers. Um, we can zoom in. So they, each individual cell now is a particle. So it's extracted individually. Um, each ROI is added to the ROI manager, which is over here. So we can go into um, our image here. We cannot see it probably, but we can go to our fluorescence image and just check. And you can see that each individual cell will have, um, is, is going to be segmented and can now be analyzed individually. Um, what we also get is a results tables in my other monitor. So this is what we, these are the particles that we, uh, these are the parameters that we selected. Um, we have the area of each segment, standard deviation of the pixels, min, of the pixels, min max, and uh, the perimeter as well as the integrated density. And this, of course, we can now save um, in as a CSV file and analyze in uh, any other software that we choose. Uh, in ImageJ, maybe that's worth mentioning, we also have the option to um, to plot results um, and to look at distributions. For example, if we want to uh, plot sort of the distribution of area versus perimeter, which is maybe something that we would uh, expect to correlate, we can look at that right in uh, ImageJ if we want to. ImageJ also has some fitting capabilities, uh, which are I think somewhere here, yes, somewhere here. So that's that's kind of nice. I usually uh, export the results um, into uh, as a CSV and look at them uh, in a different uh, in a different software. Okay, so now to make this a bit easier, so this is these are basically the clicks of how to get from a bright field image and a fluorescent channel to the result to the sort of intensity. Um, signals or intensity measurements per individual cell. So now if we have a lot of fields of view and we want to um, make this a bit easier without all the clicking, we can simply put all of these commands into a macro, which basically is just a, a script of all the commands that I just made, all of the clicks I just made. So I can close everything again. And I already put um, uh, an example macro into that test data folder, um, which is called analyze signal per cell. So we can open that. It's going to again open into in my other window. So here is what this macro looks like. And the macro basically does what I just did. So we first have to tell it where the images are. Um, I have an output folder where to put the data. I have three input images, the bright field and two fluorescence channels in this case. Um, this is just to clean up the first part. So I clean up, I close all the open images. If there are already ROIs in the manager, I delete them and I clear the results so that we don't append and kind of accumulate older results. What then happens, it will, it's going to open the, the windows, open the images. Important part here, maybe you have seen this on the previous image, is that uh, oftentimes we have like um, chromatic aberrations in our microscope. So our um, our uh, cells and our signal will be shifted with respect to the uh, corresponding uh, fluorescence channel that we use. And that's something that needs to be corrected before. So for example, by overlaying the bright field image with the channel one, one can already see, this is just a white field image, see by eye that they are sort of shifted. And that's what I did before. And then we shift them manually back um, to um, the bright field image, let's say, so the fluorescence channel to the bright field channel, we get these kind of translation um, parameters for both of the channels. And that's something that I put already into the macro to correct for that. Otherwise, the ROI from the mask will always be slightly next to the corresponding fluorescence channel. Um, then we do the uh, OTSU thresholding of the bright field image. There's an option here to watershed, which we can you can try. So it is the watershed filter is in um, in process binary watershed, and this is gonna um, uh, cut uh, clumped cells. It it will also cut cells that are not clumped actually. So it's sort of a trade-off. So it's something that needs to be tested. And then at the end, it does basically both of these analyze particles commands. Um, referring either to channel one in the first case 
or referring to channel two in the second case, and then it saves both of these results tables and at the end closes everything. So we can look at our output folder, maybe in parallel. So here's the test data. We can look at our output folder, which is this one. Um, I just maybe remove everything from here so that we can see what actually happens. Um, and we run this, uh, this macro. That's it. Everything is closed at the end. And what we have in our output folder are two uh, CSV files. Uh, we can look at it. Look at it's basically the table that we had before, and we have that now for both of our channels. And we are done with one click. Of course, we can put this into a loop and analyze a bunch of images all at the same time.